Hey guys, Ben with Big Stuff 3 here. How you doing? So today we're going to go over the boost based CO2 controller inside the Big Stuff Gen 4 box. Uh, mainly geared towards racer applications where we want to do a CO2 application over time. And um, there are some other options in there for you, but this is by far our most popular choice when guys are picking up the ECUs and want to go racing. So let's get into it here. If I go into my gauge cluster, I'm on my Boost CO2 tab, which is down here on the bottom. In the Boost CO2 tab, we're going to have a number of things here, okay? Uh, the most important one we're going to look for here is a wastegate pressure. This wastegate pressure is actually a transducer that's mounted on the wastegate right now that is actually measuring the pressure on top of the gate. Gates, gate, whichever you want to run. Um, and that's what the boost controller is going to control from itself. Now, I'm not using CO2. I'm just using an air compressor. But the point of this uh, application here is to show you that with the vehicle off, you can test your CO2 or just, you know, plumb an air compressor on so that way you're not wasting CO2 on it and make sure your boost control and everything's working okay. So what you want to do is come over here to this boost CO2 tab. And when you get your ECU from us, the boost CO2 tab is going to be here. And you're simply going to press this button and you got a couple different parameters to choose from. This boost modifier selection is very simple. This is going to let you choose which map you want to run with um, as far as your CO2 uh, pattern over time. And we'll get that here in a minute. Then you've got some generic boost curves you can enable. Um, we will have a future video on that, but that's basically going to be an offset to your base uh, CO2 maps. So let's close that. We're going to go into the boost parameter section. The boost parameter section is where you basically configure the boost controller. It's very simple. Um, enable it obviously is right up in here. Desired wastegate pressure is going to be over time. Now, if you want to test the CO2 boost controller, you have to use time. And then if you want to run mile an hour RPM or gear, you'll have to use it when the engine's actually going or the vehicle's moving to use the other actual choices. But for test purposes, when the vehicle's off, choose time and you can go. The boost kick pressure is simply a scramble feature. So if you want to hook up a button and give us a feedback into the ECU, you can have a scramble. So that way you can apply five more pounds in this case of dome pressure on top of the gate to give you some more boost. The desired wastegate pressure on the foot brake, that is our two-step. In this application, we're looking at five pounds. I'm not looking for the two-step right now. We're simply going to be focusing on the three-step or the trans brake input. But this would be fine for the two-step. That's what this is. And you're also going to have your closed loop boost gains. Now, these proportional and in, in the integral percentages here, they're pretty good out of the out of the out of the box here. You're not gonna have to mess with these um, numbers too much, and we're gonna show you why. Um, I basically have the CO2 transducers right now, or the pressure transducers on a bench with the wastegate. It's not even the vehicle right now, and out of the box, these are gonna work pretty good as far as these um, these values here. So if I go back up in the CO2 base boost controller, I'm gonna have three different maps to choose from. Now you can see here that this first map I have here is all over the place. Now, this is strictly to show how good and how tight the boost controller performs to. So I'm going to run this first number, this first map right here. Now, obviously, the maps are fully configurable. Just drag and drop the dots anywhere your heart's content. You can fill in these values left to right. You can interpolate. You can help, you know, add these values up however you want. And this is CO2 pressure over time, okay? So the, the, the desired pressure is on the left. The bottom is going to be over time. So if you want to look at this, up right here in the corner, we're going to have wastegate pressure. What I'm going to do is I'm simply going to hit the three-step button, and you're going to see our target pressure. In this case, is about 50 pounds. So if I watch the number up here in the upper right hand corner, we should go right to about 50, and we're going to sit there. That's like you're on the trans brake, and you're sitting there waiting, you're banging the chip. You're going to go right to your actual CO2 pressure on the target. So here we go. Okay, so now we're targeting around that 50 pounds. We're within a half a pound or so. I'm going to let go of the button. And now we're running through it. Okay, hits our 70 pound target. We're going to go out about 10 seconds in this case. And we're going to turn off. So as you can see, it hit those targets pretty well. We'll show you a data log here in a minute of how that works and how tight it was. Let's go through it one more time. I'm going to go on the brake. Target 50 pounds. A half a pound away, right there, we're good. And it shuts off. So again, 
very cool. Um, very effective for what is very simple. Not a lot of stuff to have to change inside here. Just move some dots around, put the tune up where you want it to be. Um, if I wanted to close this back out and if you guys have a tablet with you or if you have your laptop with you, it doesn't have to be inside the car. Again, we, we, you guys are talking Wi-Fi of the system now. If there was a different map you wanted to choose from, you could go over here to this boost modifier selection, choose a boost map number two, and I'm gonna hit burn. And now you're instantly on your other boost map. This can be configured from our dash as well. So if you guys have one of our dashes, you can do it from the dash, or you can also put a tablet in the car, have a small little tablet with you, which we you know that way you can just change your tune-ups real quick inside the car. But if I was to go back to my desired wastegate time curve, you'll see here that I'm gonna target about five pounds or so, and I'm a very slow ramp out to about five seconds or so, up to about 30. So we've now switched it. So let's again watch our upper right hand corner value. I'm gonna go on the brake. Okay, we're targeting around that five pounds or so within a half a pound. We're gonna let go. We're holding it. And then we dump. So again, very quick way to choose uh, the different boost tune-up that you want inside the car. Um, I'm gonna show you now a different way to pull up some other maps. So you have to remember inside the Big Com Pro software here, all of these windows that are opened up are individual maps, if you would. So if I want to load a dialog setting of a desired wastegate time curve, let's say I've got a favorite track that I go to and I know that this certain track I can get away with a certain type of boost controller there, whether it's, you know, whether it's got a lot of bumps or just just, just whatever the actual case may be. So if I was going to pull up Sacramento here and I wanted to open that up, it's going to say, do you want to send and burn that? I'm going to say yes. And you're going to see here that for Sacramento, pretty much I've got everything in in about a second or so. Uh, second and a half. So I've now got this curve in there. But remember, I have to go back and double check which map I'm on. I was still on number two. So let's say I want to go back to number one. I would hit burn. Close that back out. And now if I come over here in my desired wastegate time curves, I can hit the three-step button again, run right through it. Our target's going to be around nine pounds or so on the break. Here we go. Okay, let go. And that's it, right to 60 pounds. So again, very simple, very easy. Um, you got a power wire, which you're gonna run to both of the transducers. You're gonna have two wires that are gonna come back into the ECU, which you're gonna pulse with uh, each uh, transducer to vent or to close off to build up the pressure. Again, very simple, very easy to wire up and do. Um, if we go to our data logger here, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna start a new log based on that tune-up. And I'm gonna come over here to the boost controller section here, and I'm gonna start a new log. Now on trans brake, let go. And there it is following our curve. You can see it's tracking there pretty tight. And we're gonna turn it off. So as you can see here, I'm not gonna save this. We had a little bit of a pulse right here, but you have to remember, this is this data logger is going out to the thousandths of a second, okay? So when I'm over here on this line, and I enabled here, okay, that's 1.7 seconds, okay? So at 1.9 seconds, I was basically caught. So that two tenths of a second, I was on my target. So most guys will take anywhere from three to, you know, six, seven seconds to stage a car, depending on how fast it's spooling up. So you've got, we were on target within two tenths of a second. So it's pretty darn tight. And you can see how fast uh, and how good it actually hugged the curve here everywhere. We're pretty much within a pound or so of the curve. If I was to go back and choose that tune up that was all over the place here. Um, open this back up, we're gonna burn that. That was that first one from where we just basically went all over the place to kind of show you the power of it. Let's close this back out. We're gonna make sure that we're on curve number one. Oops, sorry. On curve number one, okay, which we are right here. 
Now let's start a new data log and we're gonna track that one. So again, we're targeting 50 pounds here on the break, which we're never gonna do. We're gonna release. And there you go. And we're pretty much on the money, exactly what the target was. So I'm gonna stop that data log. I'm gonna cancel. Now again, we were shooting for 50 pounds on the break, which pretty much we're never gonna do. But at 1.28 is where we hit, and we settled out about 1.78. So about five tenths of a second to basically sit right about 50 pounds. Again, uh, very powerful, very basic, very simple. Um, get the dash, you can get a tablet, you can make these last minute changes there inside uh, on your computer. You can have somebody outside on the golf cart making the change for you, whatever, you, how, how, however you want to configure it. Um, very powerful, very easy to use. If you have any questions, Ben at BigStuff3EFI.com and we'll see you on the next video. Thank you.